Hello. In this video, we are going to take a, take a break from actually developing our web page, and we are going to actually practice some JavaScript commands um, inside our console. This is really important because what this will do is provide a, a connection to, will provide a connection to um, other programming languages, and it will also kind of show you how you can practice JavaScript commands inside your browser. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to open up a, a console in your browser, and you can do that by saying Option Command I. And I've just set it up that I have one browser window on the left, and then I have my actual instructions on the right, my web page here. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to declare a variable called Word, and we're going to put Web Development. Okay, so now we have this variable called Word that's stored. And the first thing we really want to kind of make sure we're comfortable with is this idea that this has a length of 15, and the indexes go from 0 to 14. And this is consistent across all languages. Um, in JavaScript, we can access the length by saying word.length. So if we do word.length, we get 15. Um, and one of the pieces that's a little bit more subtle, it's not really important at this stage, but it's a good thing to start identifying this pattern, is you'll notice that length is spelled with, is actually written without braces. Um, that's because length is an attribute. It's a variable stored about that variable. It's actually not a function that we call, which is a subtle difference, but it can it, it's important. Remember, when you are trying to identify if it's a function call, we're looking for brackets after the command. So the first method we want to kind of make sure everyone's familiar with is this substring method. Um, for those of you that have done Python before, it's very similar if we do this, something like that. That in Python is substring, but of course if I do that, it doesn't recognize it. Um, in JavaScript, we say word.substring, and then we actually write in, we have two, two parameters, we pass it, I'm going to pass it 0 and 2, and we can put a semicolon on the end or not. It doesn't actually matter. Um, I like to encourage you to get in the habit of putting semicolons at the end. Um, and we press Enter, and we get we. So the substring method is going to act on the variable word, and it's going to take index 0 inclusive to 2 exclusive. So a nice little, a nice little idea here is that you can always check the length of the resulting substring by subtracting the second parameter or the first parameter from the second parameter. So 2 minus 0 is 2, and of course our resulting substring is a length of 2. So the practice here is to use the substring command to access these four. So if we look, we take web development. Web is three, is three letters long. Um, w is at index 0, and B is at index 2. So this is going to be word.substring. And remember, inclusive, exclusive, 0, comma, 3. Because it's going to be index, let's go up here, 0, 1, 2. If I want development, I'm going to say word.substring. And if we take the D, it's, this is 0, 1, 2. The space is 3, 4, 4, 2. And now here I could put 15, because that's going to go to the length of the string. And we can see here, it sure enough gives me the word development. But one of the things we want to develop as best practices is we never want to type in the length of the word manually. What I want to do is I want to say word.length here. And I want to use the actual built-in length, um, length attribute because what that then does is if I happen to change this, it's going to get everything from this index to the end. And that's something we really want to start developing. If I want dev, it's going to be word.substring, and the d is at index 4. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So we're going to put 4, comma, and then we want to get to the V, so 4, 5, 6, and we're going to put 7, because inclusive, exclusive, and sure enough, 7 minus 4 is 3. And there we go. And then we want EB dev, and the reason I put this one in here is to really make sure you, you understand that a space counts as a character, so we want the B, we want to start at the E, which is index 1, so word.substring, and we're going to say 1, comma, and so now we want 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and then we're going to go to index 7, so this exclusive. This inclusive exclusive is pretty consistent across languages. It's the same in Java. It's the same in Python. Um, it's a good thing to know. All right, let's clear this console. So I'm just going to use the built-in function clear, and that clears the console up for us. And now we're going to talk about um, a method called replace. This is a really nice method because what it can do is it can take a substring 
and it can replace part of a string with another string. Um, this is extremely useful, especially if you want to write contests. Um, this function does exist in Python as well as Java. And what it means is it avoids you having to actually write the loops yourself to do this using string construction. So if I say word.replace, and I'm going to replace web with backend. So basically all this does is it goes into the string and it figures out where web is. And let's actually just clear this up again. Let's write in, just let's just print out word just to the screen so we can see it. So I go word.replace, and I'm going to replace web with backend. Oops, I could spell that right. There we go. Okay, I can, and that works like that. Now, one of the things that's really useful here, and it's, it, this is a really nice technique to kind of be aware of, is that you can actually collapse a string on itself um, to remove things by replacing words. So if I replace development with an empty string, that's going to replace the word development with an empty string, and then it's going to actually collapse that string. So now I have web space. Be aware that space is still going to exist because this is an index. Now, again, another thing just to be aware of here is that even though I'm running this replace function, the variable word doesn't change. In order to make word change, I have to say word equals word dot replace development. Spell that with an empty string. And now word is word has been overwritten. And we see sure enough word is web. So let's clear this and let's put this back. Word is equal to web development. So now, if I want to collapse this string and get rid of the space, I'm going to say word.replace, and I'm going to replace the space with an empty string. Again, I can't stress enough how, how useful this, this little technique is um, in both Java and Python. It exists as well. Okay, let's clear this up. The fourth function I want to make sure we're comfortable with is the parse int function. So again, if I make a variable called x and I set it to 4, and I make a variable called y and I set it to 4 like that, it's really important to identify that these are two different types. x is an integer, meaning um, I can add, subtract, I can provide any mathematics I want to it. But, but y is a string, meaning even though you and I recognize this a numerical value, the computer doesn't. So if I try and do something like x is equal to x plus 1, x is 5, that's fine, but if I do y is equal to y plus 1, I get 41. And that's because what it's doing is it's recognizing that y is a string, it's putting it in quotes, and then it's adding the 1 to it to give me 41. So what I want to highlight here is what's called the parse int function. So parse int, and you'll see there's a parse float, is a really nice way to convert a string, which must be an integer, um, numerical, so it must be inside the quotes, you must have an integer, into an integer we can do math with. So I could do parse int 999. Oh, I spelled parse int wrong. 999. Let's clear this up. I could do parse int cat, and watch what happens. I get an error, and that's something to be aware of. And I could do parse, if I do console.log parse int cat, notice I get NAN, which stands for not a number. This is something to be aware of because this is how you can error check if you try to parse int something and you're not sure if it's an actual integer or not. And finally, we'll do parse int 1400, but we'll put a space between as a holder. Now this is something that's really important. Notice it gives me 14. Part of what you need to do as a programmer when you're using these functions is take a little time and understand how they function. There's a lot of similarities, however, some of them don't actually function. Um, they, there's some slight differences. So for example, if I come up here, I think I might have missed this one. I think I skipped the index one. So let's just use index of, if I go word dot index of web. This is a function that gives me the index of web inside the variable word. But if I do word.index of and I put cat, well there's no cat in our variable word, 
it gives me negative one. And this is a pretty standard, standard um, response when we don't find something in a string that we're looking for. I hope this video helped. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. I can't stress enough how useful it is practicing your JavaScript inside the console before translating into your program. Have a great day.